final hour, the abyss of the horizon. Sounds like it's go time then. Thingy there. Type 14 film. Sacred water. How nice of her. She didn't leave me completely fucked. Although leaving 14 film in a sacred water is kind of a dick-ass move. <laughs> I think you would have left me something a little better. Type 14. Like a type 0 or at least type 90. Something. Goddamn. You guys gonna come at me too? Do I need to hop in the cage? I'll get in the cage. It's the easiest way down? Sure. Let's go. I know it's probably from like a censorship standpoint, but what about her nipples? Like, what happened? Like, they ripped them off too? It wouldn't surprise me, honestly. But, like, are they supposed to be there in actuality? Or are they just like really fucked up and don't want her to have anything? It's just kind of messed up. Time to go. It's kind of reminded me of like Lake Haven Chrysalis, honestly, whenever the chamber you're going down to, like everything starts going to shit. Full Lovecraft, like Silent Hill chains rising up from the bottom. Still looking forward to that one. Sure, it'll be pretty good whenever it fully releases. The little prologue that they released was pretty good. I heard a lot of people saying like the whole Twins Peak Twin Peaks thing was kind of on the nose. But I've never seen Twin Peaks, so I really wouldn't know. Just gonna fuck off. I really hate the little floating ghost girls, so. I'm just gonna outrun her ass, I guess. Some tells me she won't be the only one in the end of this. I'm just gonna treat it like the mortar tunnels and keep hauling ass. Right side, as long as I tap the shit out of X whenever she attacks, she usually works pretty well at doing the evade. Hey, would you look at that? There's two of them. I missed the timing. Yeah, there's fucking three of them now. That is a little crazy. Ghost bastards. Got me. Shit. Can't tell if my screen is just going ape shit right now or like I'm starting to see things. But either way. Oh, we're going to have to deal with all of them, aren't we? Good. Hang on. What's this? Tattoo Diary 3? Sure, we'll read it. I had a dream about him. In the rift, that hell of Holly. He came before me as I was to be lowered into the abyss. The mistress does not notice. It's my dream, after all. 
He extends his hand, I do too. Just as our fingers are about to touch, the holly abates. Just a bit. I didn't lose myself, but we couldn't touch. Even I, who have been engraved with the holly of so many people, even I might still be able to dream of him in my eternal sleep. Well, that's just terribly sad. Can't wait to fight three of these little bastards. I'm so glad that they aren't the creepiest fucking <laughs> little ghost girls in the game. Listen here. Oh yeah, this is, this is going to be annoying. Three of these little shits? This is like, advanced bullshittery. Also now, I like you better whenever you had the damn hammers. Get off! Fuckers. Your fatal frame opportunities aren't exactly super convenient. Shit. There's also stuff piled all over the damn place. That is freaking terrible. <laughs> Fuck off. And that's a great picture. Yeah, damn. Enemies aren't too bad in this, but these things, like, these little shits, they're fucking annoying. Now you give me three of them? That's even worse. You might as well give me a swift kick in the nuts, I'd probably be happier. Vade has like a cooldown or something whenever you start using a lot. Oh me. God, these ghosts are just fucking annoying. 100%. They take the cake. Too much shit that they do. I hope that one is dead. They're gonna steal all my fucking healing items. God damn. Holy shit! I don't think I've lost that many healing items this entire game, except for these things. It's fucking terrible.
Help if I also didn't have to dodge 500 damn things on the floor. Exactly what they wanted to do for this fight. Fuck. I keep missing them barely out of frame, too. One behind, one in front. Good. He deserved nothing but redeath. That is a lovely picture. Please die. Thank God. That was just fucking terrible. Part of me is going to be really pissed if that's like the final boss. <laughs> I do not care for the little floating girl ghosts. That shit was awful. It's a pity because a lot of the ghosts they've done really good work on. That one they just felt especially like being dicks, I guess. Haven't I been here? Like, did I just... Travel back to where I was. It's kind of weird. I like the paper lanterns and stuff in this setting. I don't want to see anymore. Okay. Well, you're going to see me anyways. Because... Ray's pissed. Don't want to see anymore. Don't care. Coming anyway. Remember what a terrible idea this was last time? Yeah, me too. Why the hell does she get the vision of this guy? Vega. And then he woke her up, and that was not good. Rika. Uh. In my dreams, I... <gasps> God Why damn. Do That set her off. I don't want to see anymore. 
Makes sense. I'd probably go ballistic too. Oh. That's not creepy at all. I guess you're gonna like shut her across the room and be right up in my face. Yep. So we're gonna have us a fight at the river. That's cool. I like the setting. this part I don't know where she's at currently Ted weird She keeps doing the floating thing, but I can't hit her during that, so... And it sucks. she pulls me into this this time, I'm gonna see if I can get a picture. Uh, nope, that just insta-kills me. Okay. That's 
my stone mirror activated. So if she hits me here, I'm just dead. Definitely don't want her to hit us in the black and white. She like barely lands here too, it's weird. Time she doesn't even land in that phase. And of odd. Like I just need her to land to get pictures, but half the time I don't even know if she lands. Is she landing? <laughs> I can't tell. Boss fight seems kind of super RNG if she lands or not. Oh, shit. 
etched in, etched in. I realize that it is repeating over and over and over. <laughs> She like hits me before she hits me. It's weird. She'd probably be about down at this point. I wonder if she can, like, trap you in a corner in this. Seems like it'd be a very real possibility. Type 7 this whole damn time. <laughs> I'm not smart. I got stuck against the fucking wall. That's so cheap. Like the wall appeared, but I hit it before it appeared. <laughs> that just feels like dog shit. Actually, this whole last fight kind of feels like dog shit, honestly. <laughs> like, I'm not really having a ton of fun with it. It just feels... bad. <laughs> like, it feels like a chore. It's taking quite a while just to hit her or do anything. And half the time she's just like, flying around. Well, just kind of a sour note. Maybe if she did like a pattern kind of thing where she actually let me hit her. At least guaranteed every, I don't know, few swoops. And she uses that insta-kill move, like, every 10 seconds. It's easy to dodge, but it's just really annoying. I mean, unless you hit the wall that, you know, you walk into before you can even see it. That's kind of annoying. And we've seen that, so we don't need to watch it. Okay then. She just did extra steps for something. Yeah, we're definitely just gonna hit her with that. With the Type 90. You know, I was talking about getting cornered by this too. And I found out, yeah, you could. that happened. And she's doing the swoop. Ooh, 
It would be much preferable if she didn't do the swooping thing as much, because you... I'd, I don't think you can even hit her during it. Because I've looked up at her and there's like no targeting indicator. Unless it's just like super far range or something. But, yeah. Didn't last very long on her. Well, I've hit her hard, I know that much. There's also a wall, like, right to my right, so, um, definitely not running that way. Now that I know I can uh, cuck myself on a wall. Let's see. Can I actually take a picture of her during this? Yes, I can. Surprisingly. So the swoop does have a fatal frame. It's just a very tiny one. Who has one anyway? Problem is, is that she likes disappearing off camera a lot. Whenever she does it. Still not a big fan of the swoop, though. Even though I know it has a weakness, it's just it's a little too fast. Yeah, I could use slow, but I'd have to actually hit her with it for it to be effective. her is? Is that like a spirit maiden or something? Well, that was worth 750 points just from taking her damn picture right there. You know, I get more from just taking a picture of her than I do from actually fatal framing her. I'm getting stuck in the corner here. It's not good. Oh, right then. stone mirror as long as possible, so we're just gonna do that. Be mindful of that shit. She's gonna swoop before I can even get the ankle on. Oh, 
I need to hit her with the piercing shot one of these times and then hit her with follow ups. Probably be the smarter thing. If I go to the right here, I'm going to die. <laughs> kind of have to keep an eye on your surroundings whenever you're in here. If you forget, you can walk into a wall. That's good. Come on. I apparently opened my journal. Tried to take the damn piercing shot. Such a short duration. Need to get better at it. Stay away from that wall. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, if she touches me again, I'm dead. So I can't get near walls before that happens. God, I hate that fucking move. Thank God. Get out of here. Felt like such a fucking chore, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it was a tough fight, but not very satisfying. I like her design and everything else, but goddamn. Hope you enjoy your nap, cranky ass. That's a big ass ocean. I guess we do need to send her across the sh the what you call it the other shore. Yeah.
Well, at least she could be happy after she murdered probably hundreds of thousands of people. You know, at the end of the day, it's still pretty fucked up. Like, she killed a shitload of people, and she's going to be in eternal suffering. Like, holy shit. <laughs> wow. Are those all the people she killed? Because she killed a fuck mothering lot of people. that or these are all the people that she's taken with her which is still a lot and you's in there so yeah this is all the people she's killed or carrying their tattoo I want to say it's frowned upon for a living person to go to, you know, you the other side. I want to go with you. <laughs> yeah, fuck Miku. I like she needs somebody. Like, you gotta think. Miku still needs someone. That's a smart plan. I understand how you feel. I understand. But I must go. Must go alone. At least he gets it. And thankfully, he lifted our curse. When you, when you die, then I'll be gone forever. As long as you go on living, a part of me will continue to live on. Wait, is she the only one left that remembers him? Really? I need you to live. Does he not have like brothers, friends, sisters, anything? Cause I mean I get the whole concept of living on in a memory, but she's the only link? I do find that a little unbelievable. This man had no other friends or family or anybody? Weird. Please tell me best girl lived. Like, just show me Miku. Show her awake. Something. Anything. Please. I gotta know. That's all I wanna know. Did Miku live? Like, I'm glad Ray lived. You know, Kay's kind of dead, but is Miku okay? 
What the fuck? They're not even gonna show it? Is Miku dead? Like, she didn't disappear. So... Is there gonna be like an after credits? I don't... Okay, well, whatever. So... As for the game... I enjoyed the shit out of the combat. They definitely cranked that stuff up to 11 in this one. Uh, there were a few incidents of not really the greatest, like the floating ghost girls, whenever there were three of them in specific, and the ending fight didn't really feel the greatest. I'm just going to be real. Like, I, I'm not going to dress it up, anything like that. It, it didn't feel that great. Like, those two things were pretty much the only thing that I have to complain about with combat, though. Everything else? Not bad. Uh, overall game feel? This whole map was a fucking lap. Like, oh my god, if you have any problems with directions, this game will fuck you up. It was killing me. <laughs> Multiple times, like... You pretty much saw me reading the map like I was trying to drive down like, a deserted road that I've never been down and it has 60 paths splitting off of it. Like, it was... It was fucked up. Like, I could understand learning it after a while, which I did a bit, but holy shit. This map was labyrinthine. It was crazy. Uh, what else? The... Overall art aesthetic and general game aesthetic, really good. I mean, it's Fatal Frame at this point. You, I can talk about it forever. Like the graphics in these games are have always been good. Like they've always been amazing, honestly, for what they were, which was PlayStation Two, at least the ones that I'm playing are PlayStation Two. There's also an Xbox version. I assume it's even better, but for PlayStation. Really good graphics. Never had a problem with it. Uh, the ghost designs in this one, and specifically, I found very good. Like, this is probably my favorite for the ghost designs. The crawling woman. The rope maiden sacrifice. Uh, even though I didn't really like her fight, there was also uh, Akame. Or shrine maiden girl, tattoo girl, whatever you want to call her. Hers was also good. Uh, the Cleaver guys, the priests, the Shrine Maiden girls. I didn't care for them, but they were unnerving. Like, just their weird ass smiles. Uh, what else? The blind woman with the pins in her arms. Like, all of them are really, really good. Like, loved all the ghost designs. Probably my favorite of the series. As for story. It was okay. Like, I thought it was pretty cool how they had bits and bobs and thrown together pieces of all the other stories kind of together, but it felt like more of a wink wink nudge nudge kind of references than anything else. Like, Miku didn't really do a whole lot in the story except for her bits. Like, she didn't really have much. Like, Rei was obviously the main character. That much is a given. But Miku didn't really have much to do outside of that, except for be like a secretary. I mean, it was kind of weird. Uh, Mio literally got cucked the entire game. Like, she existed to be a guidepost for K, And then apparently just die or something. They never even spoke of Mio again. <laughs> like, she just disappears whenever K does. Like, nobody mentions anything. Or even remotely brings her up again, so I guess she's just dead. Uh, until I see, like, an after credits or something, I'm going to go with the assumption that Miku is also dead, which feels kind of shitty if she is, because I feel like the whole thing about this game was not letting grief hold you, but then you make all of this stuff where it's like, I don't know, it just didn't feel like there was much of a choice, except for Miku's. Like, 
There's probably different endings, I would assume. It's Fatal Frame. There's always multiple endings. But... I, I don't know if I got, like, the canon ending. I'll, I'll need to check again. But if this is the canon ending, it's kind of... Eh. I mean, it ended better than a lot of the other ones. Which is to say, everyone fucking died, but... It could have ended worse. <laughs> like, it ended probably the best. Oh, hey, there is Miku. I guess she's alive? Or something? I Maybe? never understood why we survived. But now, I realize why we were allowed to live. I'll go on living. Even with the pain. I mean, it's got a decent message. Like, I can understand. You know, you want to just keep moving on and not have, like, any of this. Days elapsed 19. Oh, apparently you can have a different amount of days, too. That's interesting. Huh. I wonder if the longer you go, the more you hallucinate. How does that work, though? Because I feel like you need to go to sleep, but if you wake up, like, how does it work? If you leave the mansion, does that skip a day? Hmm. I need to look more into that. Because it said we made it to night 19. I get rank D, we took 12 fucking hours to complete the game, so that makes sense. I didn't really get, like, jack shit's worth of ghosts, either. But... I wonder if there's like a certain amount of nights that you can beat it in. Like, do you start getting more and more hallucinations the more nights go by or something? That's the way they made it sound. Like, the longer it took, the more you would have, like, you know, hallucinations. Because I only had the one shower hallucination, the baby stroller lady, the woman cut, like, huddling in the dark room, the attic ghost, and then. Mr. Tootsie's under the stairs. And then the one walking behind me at the mirror. And like the bloody mirror, but... I wonder if you can have more. It'd be kind of cool. But yeah, overall, game was pretty fun. Uh, it took me a while to beat. It was the longest Fatal Frame that it took me to beat so far. So, at 12 hours, it was pretty decently long. Uh, some of it was getting lost, like, there were some points where it doesn't really give you a whole lot to work with, like, the stakes was probably the main one that I can think of. Like, it's just like, I need to find stakes, and then you just kind of search the doll rooms again, happen to find them, and then go around searching those. So, that was kind of weird. A lot of the other times, it's pretty on the nose, like, follow the damn butterflies, or follow Mio, or follow Mifuyu, or, you know, follow you, all of those. Uh, I'm kind of happy that one of them finally ended on a happier note. Like, most times these end with, you know, oh, everyone's fucking dead. Like, <laughs> at least Mio, or uh, Miku, finally lived. So, yeah, I mean, that's something. And now we can play on hard. I'll never get why these games tie hard difficulty behind, like, the first playthrough, but at the same time, I'm not really that upset about it. The one thing I don't like, though, is that they tie certain endings behind beating the game once. That shit is annoying. Like, I'd like to be able to get the best ending off the bat. I'm, it's just the kind of guy that I am. I want to do the best ending, or try to get the best ending. I mean, unless it's time-gated, then obviously I'm not going to get it, but if it's just, like, completing certain things or doing certain stuff or anything like that, I kind of want to be able to do it off the bat. That's the problem that I've had with these games. Like, the main issue I have with these games is they lock the best endings behind beating it once. 
which is weird. Like, why? I can get the canon endings existing, but at the same time, why not just have the best endings able to be unlocked in the beginning? Like, I, did, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it just seems weird. That's just more of a little nitpick and personal preference, but... Overall, yeah, I, I really like the game. I mean, it was good. It lasted a long time. The aesthetics are super great. The ghost designs were my favorite in the series, like I said. Uh, combat was definitely the highest note in the series so far. Like, they definitely made a lot of things really good feeling really smooth the camera felt punchy again like thank god because in two it did not feel like it hit worth a shit like that was my main problem with two is the camera just felt like shit and they brought back the charge that was my one complaint with two was the whole distance thing because i even said back in two it doesn't make much sense for the distance thing whenever the fatal frames take care of the distance anyways like, charging makes it where you have to stare at the ghosts, and it makes more sense. But if you do, like, two, where it's distance-based, then you're just getting more damage for fatal framing anyways. It doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm glad that they switched that back. That was probably the best decision that they made for this one. Now, as for the story, I liked K. I liked... All of the stuff that they had going on, like all the little nods, references, wink wink, nudge nudges, all of that. If you played the first two, then you knew about it. Like, that was just kind of like a nod at anyone who's played the other ones. It's like, hey, you know about this. Like, you've heard about this place. The Minakami Dam. The Himuro Mansion. Mafuyu. Like, all of this stuff. You knew about all of these things because you'd been there before like you knew about these guys so it wasn't just like out of nowhere i found that really cool like i liked how they referenced back to the first games and then they had the sections from the first game so you're like oh i know this place i've been here before this is familiar and then they fuck with you by swapping it and jumbling it around and you're like something's not quite right <laughs> like i i loved it I loved that little bit. Like, people will probably complain that it's reusing old assets to make it. Which, sure, I mean, that's valid. I, I can't really make a counter argument against that. They literally bits and bobs the old games on top of this one to make it probably more padded. Like, that's fair. Uh, that's a valid criticism. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be like, no, that's fucking stupid, but... I do like how they used the areas, remashed them, did new ghosts with twists on old ghosts like the Shrine Maidens that Miku saw with the whole pulling ritual. They made those come back. So that was cool. Like that was like specifically a Miku kind of nightmare that started bleeding into the other people's. And I do like how originally you couldn't go to other people's sections like they were just cut off from the rest but whenever their memories start bleeding together then you can start going to each other's nightmares and it was really cool interesting like little details like that where the deeper they go into the dream the more they interconnect that sort of thing the story about the whole priestess thing honestly felt like one of the weaker points I liked Mafuyu not Mafuyu fucking you and K's uh, investigation of the manner of sleep that was probably the most interesting with the lullabies and stuff the whole like just overall manner of sleep was interesting it was a little weak at points like I don't know the whole maiden losing her brother thing or wanting to see her brother like it got a little convoluted to me like I, I don't know like it was hard to follow at points like it sounded like mother like and people can correct me if i'm wrong but off the top of my head it sounds like mother had child didn't want to get rid of baby boy down well which we saw 
She sent him to the village down below with an earring with the hope that he would eventually return to her at one point or another. Like, was it the mom or was that... What, was that the shrine maiden? Like, which one was it? It made it sound like there was a mother with a baby who turned out to be Kaname. And then he went to the village because he was a boy, so he was banished from the temple or the shrine. So he couldn't come back. But then he came back later, was taken into the shrine by, you know, Akame, who ends up seeing him killed, and then this whole thing happens. So, I, I don't really know exactly how it all pieces together. Like, I, I don't know, it just felt like so much information. Like, then they bring back Mufuyu... They bring back Mio and Mayu, and then suddenly Kay is their uncle, and then, like, ugh, it's just, like, so much information. Like, there's too much information at some points. Like, it feels like too much wink-wink, nudge-nudge. Like, there's so many things that you're, you're dealing with three main characters, you're dealing with all of the side stories with the three main characters, you're dealing with all of the backstory of them, all of them, like... I've even played the first two games and I'm just kind of like, whoa, holy shit, like, calm down, <laughs> that kind of thing. Because you're dealing with them, you're dealing with their backstory, you're dealing with Mio in the hospital, you're dealing with Yoshino uh, Takigawa in the hospital, like, her whole shtick, you're dealing with the crawling woman, you're dealing with the maiden, you're dealing with the shrine maiden, you're dealing with the, <laughs> the carpenters, you're dealing with, like, you get it, there's you're fucking bleeding information here like it is hard to collect like you need a bigger bucket kind of thing like it is they're coming at you heavy with it and then you're dealing with the rituals you're dealing with the lullabies you're dealing with the poems you're dealing with the cassettes you're dealing with the ghosts in the attic you're dealing with the spirit stone radio you're dealing with the camera obscura you're dealing with the hallucinations in your house like holy shit like just calm down calm down that's not to say it's bad, it's just it overloaded me. I'm, I'm not going to lie, like, the story in this one, it fucking overloaded me. Like, I was, I was getting very confused at some points, like, holy shit, like, what is happening? <laughs> you start off in the manner of sleep, just start seeing things, suddenly, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, and it's like, rapid fire, just non-stop, like, holy shit, calm down, please. Like, I'm, I'm still writing notes on the first thing. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, as far as Scare Factor goes, because it's a horror game, you know, I have to include it. As far as Scare Factor goes, this one got me the most. The ghosts were probably, like, the best at doing it. It still didn't really make me jump, but there were some points where it was just, like, the ghosts were freaky enough and they liked to teleport enough to where sometimes they'd pop up behind me and just be like, boo, essentially. And I'd be like, oh shit. <laughs> like, the tattooed maiden essentially took the job of like the relentless pursuer in this one. It felt cool. Like, she, I like her whole aesthetic. Like, she's the nemesis or the Mr. X or. Who else am I looking for? Uh, I guess Monster from The Bunker. I played that recently too, so it's still fresh on my mind. So, yeah, she's... The Shrine Maiden is basically the unstoppable force. Uh, she's always chasing you. She wants you out of her shit, essentially. Like, she wants to just be, like, rid of you. That sort of thing. So, I like her whole aesthetic. The only downside was the boss fight. That was it. They've pretty much nailed it on combat. They nailed it on designs. They nailed it on aesthetic. The map could have been a little less labyrinthine. The story could have been a little less, like trim the fat, like not rapid fire into my face at 500 miles an hour. Would have been cool. But I mean, overall, it wasn't bad. Like there were just a few nitpicks. Like, like I said, boss fight story. Some of the enemy, like, AI patterns and shit. Like the floating ghost girls. That was were annoying. But other than that, 
I didn't have any problems. Like, I'd still say this game is like a 9. Like, 8.5, 9. Same as Fatal Frame 2. Fatal Frame 1, I still had the most fun with. It still felt the best. It still felt like it had the most going for it. Like, overall, I think the boss fight was really the biggest thing that hindered the experience. Like, it felt kind of bad just getting through all of it to have that as a boss fight. It just didn't feel good. Like, like I was saying during it, it felt like a chore. Like, it, it literally felt like I was doing chores, essentially, for a boss fight. Like, she felt like she had too much health, which I didn't really have a good film, so I can't really dock it too much on that. If I had had more Type 90, it would have probably been, like, fucking six photos or something with all the upgrades that I had. So, really, more the boss fight boils down to... I just didn't like her patterns. Like, I get it. I could fatal frame the swoop. That was fine. Like, I, whatever. That That's cool. But the walking up, half the time, I think it was like bugged or something where she was hitting me before she even started the animation. So that felt like shit. And then the whole insta kill thing. Like, I just, I do not like insta kill mechanics in fights like that. Like, it just feels like shit. And then she used it so much. Like, it just felt fucking terrible. It felt really bad to die to that. Because all I was trying to do was test out if I could take a picture during it. Understandable. I, I lose my stone mirror, whatever. Like, that's fine. But it felt fucking bad to not even be able to see the wall that I walked into and died on. Like, the invisible wall hit me before the shadow even, like, dissipated on the wall that I could see. Like, essentially, there were the cave walls, and then about 5 to 10 feet before that was an invisible wall. So you would run into the wall, and then the shadow would dissipate, showing you that the wall is there. Like, that felt fucking horrible. And that was my only death in this game. And that just feels like shit. <laughs> like, it felt bad for that to be the only death. Like, I... If I could have done anything, it would be beat this game deathless. Like, that was the one thing I was kind of hoping for. And it, at the very finish line, because of a, an invisible wall and her insta-death thing, it felt fucking awful. Like, that's that's all I can say about it is the insta-death thing, I, I don't care for it. Like, it was dumb. Like, the amount that she was using it was just over the top stupid and you can only have one stone mirror if she touches you twice you're dead like that's it and if she happens to hit you against a wall or get you against the wall and she happens to spawn in the right place you are essentially cornered like you're in slow motion and she is coming at you like you're just fucked that would have happened on the second one if i had let my stone mirror go to waste like I literally made the right call saying I want my stone mirror to last because if I had let my stone mirror dissipate, she would have killed me instantly against that wall. Because you saw in the second fight, whenever I was fighting her, I was against the wall and I even said, I can't run right. I'll run into the wall. So I started running left. She spawned right there and there was not a damn thing I could do about it like I couldn't turn I couldn't do anything because she was already spawned right on top of me and that just that rose me the wrong way like that basically soured the fight on its own with how much she was doing that and yeah I can I can understand if people would say just don't be near the wall when the attack happens but at the same time the problem is you're kind of dodging or swooping, flying all over the place, her hitting you like a fucking truck whenever she's running at you, sometimes you just need to be against the wall. Like, sometimes you need to actually just dodge to a wall. Like, it, it happens. Like, sometimes you lose focus on it. Sometimes you're just not really paying that much attention to her. Like, that sort of thing. And you end up against the wall, and then the situation happens, and then, well, you're fucked. Like, 
You can say get good. I'd understand. Like, that's completely acceptable. But whenever you're first starting out, first experience like me, and you die because you ran into a fucking wall that you can't see, feels bad. That's just the gist of it. Like, <laughs> that's just how it goes. Like, it felt bad to me on my first playthrough. Like, personally, it, it felt fucking bad. Like, that's it. That's all I can really say. As a personal first experience, it felt bad. I, I'm not going to say the fight is trash. Like, it worked perfectly fine. If you have the film, you're going to be perfectly fine. If you have a stone mirror, you'll be okay. I had enough sacred waters and healing materials where it was perfectly fine. It's just that one mechanic being spammed the shit out of at me felt bad. It, it felt like shit. <laughs> it made the entire fight feel just awful. Like, it kind of broke the pacing. Kind of, she had three attacks, really, which was the swoop, the insta-kill, and the walking at you and pointing, like throwing the reaper lady at you. That was it. She had like three attacks and she loved using that fucking insta-kill. That was the problem. If she had more, wouldn't really have any of that. It wouldn't really have any problems, so. But that's really about the biggest nitpick. Overall, game's good. Like, I enjoyed it. I I had as much fun with it, like, I was laughing, I was having a good time, all of that stuff. I even enjoyed the ghosts that were haunting me, like, some of the ghost designs were fucking hilarious. I still have no idea what's with the baby stroller lady, like, what the hell is the story behind that? That's funny as shit for some reason. Like, there's not too many that I find just hilarious. The second one had the lady that was just dropping from the ceiling. Oh my god, that is the funniest fucking ghost I have ever seen. Like, will never not be funny. This one, it was more of Ray's reaction to whenever the ghost lady is just sitting by her. <laughs> like, by her bed and grabs her arm for some reason. Her reaction to that and just the lack of any sound, music, anything. Like, I was dying laughing. I I don't know why, but that was the funniest fucking moment to me. She's just dying. Like, you can tell she's just like, oh shit. <laughs> but at the same time, the way she looked was just like, I don't know. It, it just, it struck something in my primitive brain where I just needed to laugh my ass off. Like, it just looked goofy as shit. <laughs> I was having a ball with that. I had a lot of fun with a lot of the parts. Like, it was really good. Like, that's about the most I can say anymore. Like, that basically went over most everything. Like, they reused assets. They did all this stuff. Like, general nitpicks, whatever, yada yada. Combat was the best it's been. Enemy designs were the best it's been. Like the characters, like the aesthetic, like the designs, everything. Like, can't complain about it. Eight point five out of or eight point five or nine out of ten. And like I usually say, that's not like a objective scaling. That's just how much fun did I have? Like 8.5 or a 9. Would I play it again? Sure. Probably like five or six times. That's usually what I say whenever I say 8.5 or 9. Like I can see myself playing it quite a few more times. Was it as fun as the first one? No. Like the first one really, really, really got me going. Like, I loved the first one. That was like 9.5. So, it's really hard to top the first one. If I had to choose, though, for from a combat perspective, Fatal Frame 3 was the best. Story-wise perspective, Fatal Frame 2 probably still wins. Like, Fatal Frame 2 definitely wins in the story category. Like, it just had... The overall general package of story, its own self-contained thing with Mio and Mayu, like the whole village being cursed, that sort of thing. Three absolutely has the best combat, but Fatal Frame 1 would still win out just off of feel, like just how fun it was, how interesting it was, what felt good, like that sort of thing. So yeah, if you're wondering, how I usually grade the stuff. 
Fatal Frame 1 wins on Soul, essentially. I know you can call it a cop-out, but that's just... It felt the most fun. It was probably because it was the most fresh, so it's like a new-ish kind of nostalgia biased. But, I mean, it still felt the most fun. Like, that's all I can say, really. Fatal Frame 2? I loved that story the most. So... It definitely wins on story, and is still like an 8.5 or a 9. Fatal Frame 3 wins out the most on combat. It felt the best for that, except for the boss fight. You can say get good. I, that, that's perfectly valid. That's fine. Yeah, have fun with it. So, Fatal Frame 3 definitely wins out the most on combat. Fatal Frame 2 is definitely last in that category, by the way. So, using that... If Fatal Frame 2 had the combat of Fatal Frame 3, I think it would probably be my favorite. The problem with Fatal Frame 2 was just the whole distance checking thing with the camera and the fact that the camera did not feel punchy worth a shit. Fatal Frame 3, I was hitting Fatal Frames left and right. You can say, yeah, they made it a little too easy. Uh, I could agree with that. Like, Fatal Frames were not that hard to get in this one. Like, the first one in the first and second one it felt like you actually had to earn them like you had to let a ghost be quite literally up your bum and even then it was still like a 50 50 in a fatal frame most times it was like a close shot or a zero shot like it would not be a fatal frame that sort of thing so they definitely loosened the grip for getting fatal frames in fatal frame three but at the same time, that made it feel better. Like, that made it feel good. Like, you got more fatal frames. It wasn't, like, stingy with them. If you let a ghost get on top of you, odds are you got a fatal frame. Like, that... I think that's how it should work regardless. Like, if a ghost is literally in your grill, and you happen to take a picture of it, I think that's perfectly acceptable to get a fatal frame. Like, that's fine. I have no objections with Fatal Frames being easier in these games. Like, if the ghost is on top of you, I think you've earned it. If you can capture the ghost whenever it's swooping and diving all over the fucking place, and it's right on top of you, yeah, you earned it. Like, essentially, you earned the Fatal Frame. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts. So, other than that, and all of my crazy ramblings, as usual, for, like, 30 minutes after the fact I think as far as the list goes Fatal Frame 1 Fatal Frame 2 because the story was better and Fatal Frame 3 because the combat like in that ranking order it would literally go 1, 2, 3 so <laughs> 2 wins out best on story 3 wins best out on combat 1 wins out best on soul yeah you can like I said call it a combat it's fine but it felt the best. That's how I do things. But other than that, yeah, that's going to be the end. Uh, Fatal Frame 3. I'll maybe do Made in a Blackwater. It really depends. Like, I hear it's not the greatest, but at the same time, they have made a port recently, so I might play it on PC. It depends. Like, I don't know. I guess it depends on interest. Uh, my main interest was with the original trilogy, because that was where it kind of all went. Like, that that was, you know, the original trilogy. So, I don't know. It really depends on interest. I might try Maiden of Blackwater. I might try Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, those ones. Uh, if I could ever get a copy and make it work of the remake of Fatal Frame 2, I would probably also try that even though it is on the Wii and I suck ass with the Wii controller, so I would still like to try it. Like it it might be interest it might make Fatal Frame 2 my favorite because it was like Deep Crimson Butterfly or something it was called. I need to check it out, but yeah, that was the Fatal Frame trilogy. Uh I guess if there's any interest, I might try Made in a Blackwater, might try Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. I don't know. Like I'll probably look more into it myself because I just like playing things that interest me. Not really, like, much else. Like, I'm all for requests. That's fine. 
Like if people want to request things and it sounds interesting, or maybe it's just something that they like. Like if you can sell me on it, I'll probably play it. That's just how I do. But yeah, I mean, we'll probably delve into Fatal Frame again sometime later. But for now, I don't know. This might be where it ends. We'll see. Might go through the entire series at one point or another. But yeah, other than that, let me know what you guys think. And have a good one.